Alright, welcome back. This is Unit 7. Mr. Sullivan is back. I'm sorry you've had to put up with those other guys. Don't worry, I am back. And I'm back with a really cool chapter, in my opinion. Starting off with one of the great, all-time famous mathematical things, the Pythagorean Theorem and its converse. You probably know this one already, but we're going to do it anyway. Alright, this is famous in, in all sorts of ways. So... First of all, Pythagorean Theorem is named after a guy Pythagoras. He was a math guy back in like 529 BC. So here it is. The Pythagorean Theorem. If you have a right triangle, so we have a right triangle here, A, B, and C. Now we're always going to say for this case we have these sides. We're going to always label it across from angle A is side A, across from angle B is side B, across from angle C is side C. If you have a right triangle, then the sum of the squares of the sides of the triangle are equal to the square of the hypotenuse. All right, so across from the 90 degrees is the hypotenuse. In this case, we're always going to label that C. All right, this is the shorthand. This is the Pythagorean theorem right here. So if you have a right triangle, this is true. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So if I square the lengths of these sides and add them together, it's going to equal the square or squaring the hypotenuse. Okay, not the square root, but squaring it. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay? We'll do a couple in a second. But take a look. A Pythagorean triple is a set of numbers that satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. The biggest number is always the hypotenuse. So these are common Pythagorean triplets. 3, 4, 5. So if you see these numbers you automatically know it's a, it's a right it's a right triangle it's it's going to work. If you see 3 and 4, you know the third side is going to be 5. If you see 4 and 5, you know the third side is 3. It's just automatic. 5 12 13 8 15 17 7 24 25. So in other words, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. 9 plus 16 equals 25. 9 plus 16 is 25, so yes, 25 indeed is 25. All right, so it's the le it's the side square that, that really matter there, okay? All right, let's, let's just get right into it and try some here. So let's find the missing side, round it to the nearest tenth. So again, always across from the 90 degree angle is our side we have by ourselves. So we're doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I know that this is c doesn't matter which is A and B really, so I'm going to do X squared plus 9.4 squared equals 14 squared. Alright, let's do this out. 9.4 squared is 88.36 and 14 squared is 196. If I want to get X squared by itself, I have to subtract 88.36 to the other side and I get 107.64 or excuse me, just 0. 0.6, my bad, all right, and if I then, oh no, that was right, 0. 0.64, if I then need to get the x by itself, I have to square root it, now this time it said leave as a, around the nearest 10, so I'm not going to do anything fancy, I'm just going to put in my calculator, square root 107.64, and I'm going to get 10.37, around the nearest 10th is 10.4. So you need to watch the direction. Sometimes it's going to say nearest tenth. If it does, hey, uh, not, not a problem. Just round it nearest tenth. Sometimes it's going to say this. It's going to say leave in simplest radical form. Chapter e, uh, Unit 7, you're really going to need to remember your radicals. That's why we've been doing them. All right? So this is my C because it's across from the hypotenuse. Or it's the hypotenuse. It's across from the 90. So 8 squared plus x squared equals 12 squared. 64 plus x squared equals 144. I want to get x squared by itself. I have to do the opposite and move 64 to the other side. And I get 80. So 144 minus 64 is 80. All right. And I'm going to take the square root. The square root of 80, well, that's going to be the square root of 16 times 5. 
And the square root of 16 is 4 radical 5. So x would equal 4 radical 5. All right, you can see you're going to need to remember those radicals. All right, before we move on to the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, this theorem is so famous that it's in a lot of really popular movies and stuff. So watch these two clips. One's from The Wizard of Oz, all right, and then The Simpsons right after it. Now, both of these people are wrong. This is not the Pythagorean theorem, but in the Simpson clip, he actually corrects himself. Hey, there's something you don't see in a toilet every day. Anybody lose their glasses? Last chance. Woohoo! The sum of the square roots of any two sides of an isosceles triangle is equal to the square root of the remaining side. That's a right triangle, you idiot! Go! All right, so. Hopefully you see that Wizard of Oz, one of the all-time famous movies, was wrong. It talked about isosceles triangles, but again, it has to be a right triangle. All right, so now let's do the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. The converse. If we have this triangle, and if a squared plus b squared equals c squared is true, so if this does work out, if this comes out and works out, then it's a right triangle. If it comes and it doesn't work out, well, we'll get to that in a second. So let's try these. Are these right triangles? Well, let's see the first one. Now, we always know the longest leg is going to be C because it's a hypotenuse. So, is 26 squared equal to 10 squared plus 24 squared? So, 26 squared is 676. 10 squared is 100. Whoops, 100. 24 squared is 576. 100 plus 5, that's 676 equals 676. So yes, that is, in fact, a right triangle. Okay? Let's try this one. Now they just give you three sides on this. How do I know which is A, B, and C? Well, it doesn't matter which A and B is. All that matters is C is the longest side. So is 6 squared plus 8 squared equal to 11 squared? Is 36 plus 64 the same as 121? Let's see, 100, does 100 equal 121? No, it does not. Therefore, no, this is not a right triangle. Okay, so right now, this is great. You know, it tells us if it is a right triangle, if it isn't a right triangle, but it'll be, go on even further from that. It, it shoots off into this. So it tells us this. If C squared is bigger than A squared and B squared, the triangle is going to be obtuse. So that big, we're going to have one angle that's more than 90 degrees, right? That C, which would be our hypotenuse, but it's not because it's not a right triangle. Our longest leg is going to be across from an angle that is bigger than 90 degrees, okay? Likewise, if C squared is less than A squared plus B squared, then we have an acute triangle. So all three angles are less than 90 degrees. So let's take a look here. Over here, we had the c squared was bigger than. So when c squared is bigger, that means this is going to be obtuse. Okay? Let's see if we can try another one. So tell whether these are acute, obtuse, or right. So again, 15 squared, biggest one's all by itself, is 15 squared equal to 5 squared plus 12 squared. If it's equal, then it would be a right triangle. So, you know, sometimes you want to put this. So 25 plus 144, 225, and this is 169. Well, this is bigger than 169. Therefore, this is going to be obtuse. And Mr. Sullivan cannot spell or write. I'm sorry. Let's try this one. How about 10 squared plus 12 squared? What's the relationship with 15 squared? So that's 100 plus 144, and is that equal to 225? Well, 100, that's 244. Well, 244 is greater than 225. So the C is less than the other sides. It's less than the other sides. That means this is going to be acute. All right? And remember, what would they be if they were exactly the same? They'd be right. Okay? 
All right, let's do an application here. So Thor is 120 feet directly below Iron Man. So I'm going to draw a little picture. Every time I see you do one of these problems, I should see a picture. And I'm, I'm going to give you a hint. The entire chapter is about triangles. I should see a lot of triangles. Directly to the east of Iron Man is 500 away is Loki, the bad guy. All right? Since this is directly below and directly, this is a right triangle. How far away or who is the furthest? All right, let's label this. So Iron Man is 500 here, and Thor is 125 feet there. So we need to see how far is Thor from Loki. So x squared equals 125 squared plus 500 squared. Oh, these are big numbers. Now, if I were you, just put that in my calculator all at one time. All right? Save you some trouble. So 125 squared plus 500 squared, you should get 265,625. And then the square root of that would round to 515.4. So this would be 515.4. Now, did we, uh, did we answer the question? We didn't answer any question, did we? So who's closer? Iron Man is closer, 500, 515. How much closer? Well, 515 minus 500, he is 15.4 feet closer. Not much, right? But still closer. So pause the video, try these out. All right, let's see what we got here. So we got 10 squared plus 5 squared equals x squared. So 100 plus 25 equals x squared. That's 125. Now this wants radical form, not so I can't just put in my calculator. So 125 is 25 times 5. Square root of 25 is 5, radical 5. All right. Over here, is it a right, acute, or obtuse? So 6 squared plus 8 squared, does that equal 13 squared? 36 plus 64 and 169. 100 is less than 169. Therefore, the C squared it by itself is bigger. It's obtuse. All right. Again, this is stuff I know you've done. The, the problems here is going to be for kids who are not real good at radicals. I apologize, but we've been working on those all year. And you should know how to do those by now really well. So... Do uh, a good luck on, do your best. Good luck on the, on the mesh check. I'll see you next time.